So it's pretty exciting that we're gonna be checking this out today. Let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed and see what is inside. So first of all, shout out to Robert at Value Electronics for sending this over to us for review for you guys. So thanks for that. So inside the box, we have the Sony instruction manual in English, also Francais and Espanol. And here's the accessories box. Inside the box, we have the Sony remote. Here is the power cord. Got the batteries. There's an HDMI cable. One, two, three, four power cords for each of the speakers and 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable. On the top here, we have a little control hub. This is the brains of the whole operation. I guess you could think of it as like a, like a receiver almost. This is what it's gonna contain all your IO, your ins and outs. It looks like a giant Apple TV almost. On the top here, has the Sony branding, high res support, Nothing on the front, nothing on the sides, except for air vents. On the back, you have power, USB input for update, LAN connection, HDMI EARC, output for the Sony Center Out, which will connect to, to uh, compatible Sony television sets. And then you get your power input as well. This is uh, taped off, but it says HDMI in. In the package, lift that off. And you can see that you have all four speakers. I'm not gonna take out all four, I'm just gonna take out one because they're all exactly the same. Pretty hefty, nice little weight. I don't know what they are pound wise, but I'll put the specs on the screen. They do feel pretty nice. All right, so this is what we got. So fairly large, well not large, not too small. It's about 12 inches tall, six, six inches wide, and I think about five inches deep. It's got a curved front on the back is flat so you can lay this up against your wall if you wanted to on the top here if you can see underneath the grill there is a full range driver up here which i believe is one by two inches on the bottom behind this grill which you're not going to be able to see and i don't think this is removable it's not but there is a three by four inch woofer also a three quarter inch soft dome tweeter which is up here and then the woofer's on the bottom. This is a ported design as well as a port behind here. If I can get a picture of it, I'll throw a picture of it on screen. So this is a perforated grill on the front and on the top. It's got a nice little texture to it. It's made out of plastic, very thick, hard plastic. On the bottom here, you have your power input, and then you can uh, lace the power cable through here, the little notch on the bottom. And then there is a pairing button on the side here, right there, and then the power button. It's on the opposite side. So this, of course, four, four speakers in the box. You get four of these guys. So if you were to break it down, it's 4.0.4. So four speakers, four lower channels, no subwoofer, and then four overheads. So the lower four speakers, and then since each one has a uh, upfiring Atmos height speaker or height effect speaker, it bounces upwards, that's also four as well. And this is gonna give you effectively 12 channel surround sound by using Sony's proprietary 360 degree spatial audio, which I would assume would calculate distances and levels. Also with the use of DSP to give you some phantom imaging between each speaker. So this should be pretty impressive. It's supposed to give you like a 12 channel surround experience, which I think is 7.1.4. So seven lower channels, one subwoofer, and then four overhead channels. I don't know how it's gonna do the point one because there's actually no subwoofer, but if you wanted to add bass to it, we do have the optional subwoofer. This is Sony's SW5 wireless subwoofer. They have two versions. They have an SW3, which is a smaller version, and then this is their biggest one, which is the five. Inside the box, we get some documentation there and the power cord. So this is a pretty heavy sub weighs 28 and a half pounds and not only can you use this with the HTA9 but if you picked up Sony's HTA7000 soundbar you can pair it with the soundbar as well again this is sold separately this is this does not come with the HTA9 so it is an extra cost 
but from the looks of it, it looks pretty nice. I mean, you can see here on the, on the, on the side, you've got the Sony branding on that side. And then on the opposite side, you also have the Sony branding as well, and kind of like this goldish bronze color, which gives it a kind of a luxurious appearance. And also this has a textured leather at finish. So it looks like leather, even though it's plastic, the material here, well, the texture finish looks like it's leather. So this guy here, size wise, it's something like 16 by 16 by, I think on the bottom, if we can get in there, I don't know if you can see in there, but there's a passive radiator on the bottom there. And then on the front of the subwoofer, there's a seven inch driver up front. Around back, you have your power input, power button, and then your link button. This is a 300 watt subwoofer. I don't know what the frequency response is, but this will link wirelessly to the HTA9 and also the A7000 soundbar. I'm using a Samsung LSP9 Ultra Short Throw Projector, which makes it hard to find a spot for a center channel speaker. But if Sony Spatial Technology works as advertised, it should create a pretty good phantom center. And the thing is, your speakers don't have to be perfectly aligned with your display. So I'm going to place the left channel on a speaker stand, and the right speaker is going to go right underneath the display. Keep in mind that each speaker is labeled on the bottom. Front left, front right, rear left, and rear right. So don't get them mixed up. I'm going to place the left rear on the top of my Dynaudio speaker, and the right rear is going to go on top of some boxes in the back corner. The only speaker that's going to be close to ear height is going to be the left channel. I'm going to be using an Apple TV and an X200 Revon 4K Blu-ray player for sources. I'm going to plug the Revon into the hub and the HDMI out on the hub into the Samsung projector. After you've plugged in the speakers, you'll see there's a little red light at the bottom. Once you power on the hub, it should connect to each one of the speakers and tell you on screen that it's successful, and the red light on each speaker will turn green. Next, the system will optimize your connection, which takes about a minute or so. After that, it'll take you to the sound field optimization to calibrate your speakers to your room. Each speaker has its own pair of microphones built in to measure the acoustics of your space. If you move the speakers or make any changes, you will have to recalibrate. Next, you're going to connect to your Wi-Fi. Once you get that set up, there's a few options on the home screen. You can choose between TV input or HDMI input. Under Listen, you have your streaming services like Chromecast and Spotify. It'll also work with voice commands from Alexa. Now let's take a look at the advanced settings. Under speaker settings, you have the sound field optimization, which we already did earlier. If you make any changes with the speakers, this is where you'd come to recalibrate. Under manual speaker settings is where you'll tell the system where the speakers are placed in your room. You can specify if the left speaker is closest to the TV, if the TV is dead center, or if the right speaker is closest to the TV. In my case, I place the right front speaker the closest. Next, you're going to tell it where your seating is in the room. Your seats are either close to the display, in the middle of the room, or closer to the surrounds at the back. Next, you'll specify if your room is on the left side of the room, in the middle of the room, or towards the right. Now you're going to specify how high you want the sound stage, so things like dialogue can seem to come up higher than ear level. At the default, which would be ear level, or lower than ear level. I prefer to keep it at the default because the other two options didn't do too much for my space. If you've got a bigger space or a longer space, then it might be more convincing. And here you have the test tones if you want to manually adjust the rear channel levels. You can do that by using the remote control.
Under wireless speaker settings, you have the options to auto connect to the speakers, or if you need to do it manually, you can do that here as well. You can check your connection as well as the software version. The next option will let you use a compatible Sony television as a center channel, since the A9 doesn't include a center channel. We'll come back around and check this feature out later. Under audio settings, you've got DSEE, which will upsample lower quality audio and make it sound better per Sony. Audio dynamic range compression, which I'm gonna keep off, for sound field, if you want to keep this on, it'll use Sony's vertical surround engine to upmix audio to make use of the high channels to give you a better immersive sound. You will have to keep this on if you want to use the immersive audio enhancements and the presets like cinema, music, and standard, so keep that in mind. Dolby Speaker Virtualizer will upmix audio to make use of the high channels, but it won't upmix DTS, and the same for Neural X. It'll upmix everything except for Dolby. For HDMI settings, you've got options for CEC control, power on off option, an audio bypass mode if the A9 is turned off, EARC on off, and HDMI signal format. You're gonna to wanna to keep this on enhanced if you wanna pass through 4K 120 or 8K signals. And there's a picture and picture option, which I didn't try. The rest of the options are self-explanatory, so I'm just gonna let it run through. You can skip it or pause it if you wanna check it out. The first demo we're going to check out is the DTS-X 7.14 callouts. Left front. Right front. Center. Left side surround. Right side surround. Left rear. Right rear. Left front height, right front height, left rear height, right rear height. Now in MySpace, this sounded more like 5.1.4 instead of 7.1.4. I never got the feeling that they were phantom side surround channels. Back channels were clearly there and so were the height channels. I think if you have a longer space to give the speakers more room to breathe, then maybe the system will do a better job at creating phantom sides. My space is only 13 feet deep, so possibly something longer will work a lot better. It just didn't work for me. Next up is the Atmos helicopter demo. This was a very cool and convincing demo. I heard the chopper blades above my head move counterclockwise around my room. If you close your eyes, it kind of feels like the walls are moving around you. I've not heard a soundbar ever do this before. Next demo we're going to check out is Midway on the Apple TV. It's got a ton of flyover effects and some crazy bass all in Dolby Atmos. I can confidently say that this is definitely better than any soundbar that I've heard and that the Atmos effect is better than any soundbar that I've heard, which shouldn't be a surprise since we're talking about four individual speakers rather than having a dozen speakers packed into a tiny 6 inch deep box. The Atmos effect was very clear with a little bit of smearing between the space above the speaker up to the ceiling, which is the same for the surround speakers. I could still hear the planes flying from top front to back rear, and honestly, I was surprised it sounded this good. 
Even without the subwoofer, there was still a good amount of bass being pushed all the way through the little drivers. If you do want to get a little more bass out of the speakers, you can raise the bass levels using the remote control. When I did have it on max, I felt the speakers sounded very boomy and bloaty. It was impressive sounding because it was big and booming and much better than the projector speakers. But if you are someone that's a little more discerning, you might want to keep the bass on low. Plus, when I had it on max, I could make the sound distort a bit when I was listening at louder volumes. This, of course, is a lot louder than I would ever listen to. Once I added the subwoofer, it expands the sound stage and brings up that low level of response that these little speakers just can't do by themselves. Much like the bass response from the speakers, I wouldn't call the subwoofer exactly tight and articulate, it's more room filling and boomy, but it does add to the excitement of these big action movies. Up next I threw in Underwater, which has a 7 channel mix. I wanted to throw it in to test out the immersive audio upmixing. 200 meters away from the bottom. It might be hard to tell in the video, but by turning the immersive audio on, it expanded the sound stage outwards in every direction. It's a little bit like some of those DSP enhancements minus the hollow echoey sound. I liked how it brought out the background details like the creaking interior and the little droplets of water. There's also some banging noises going on outside. It for sure gives you a nice immersive bubble. One thing I wasn't able to do was apply Dolby or Neural X upmixing to it since it was playing back as LPCM. On a receiver or processor, applying Dolby or DTS upmixing isn't a problem. Still, the 360 spatial mapping made my living room sound a lot bigger than it actually is. And finally, I wanted to check out how good the voice enhancement was. So, I threw in one of the movies that's super hard to hear dialogue. Tenant, on the Apple TV. Yes. This generation looks awful, it's all survival. Yes. This generation looks awful, it's all survival. That's exactly what they're playing. If the voice enhancement doesn't work well enough, and you have a compatible Sony television like the A80J, you can set the TV up to work as a dedicated center channel. Go into the A9 settings and turn on the TV center speaker mode. Take the included auxiliary cable and plug it into the hub. The other end plugs into the yellow input marked center speaker in on the television. Go into the TV's audio output setting and choose audio system. Turn on the TV center speaker mode and it'll walk you through the setup process. I know, this part is a little out of focus. I got one problem, Dan, and I'm gonna need your help. Give me that man of the lab, now. My research team is stranded. For a full review on using the TV as a center channel, check out Whisper Status 74's video. I'll leave a link for it in the video's description. At the time of this video, the HDA9 is $1799 and the subwoofer is $699, so you're looking at $2500 for the complete system. That's if you opt for the subwoofer. The speakers alone sound plenty good, but for maximum impact, you'll definitely want to add the sub. I suppose this is an alternative to getting a high-end soundbar and even an entry-level receiver slash speaker system. I can say for sure that I'd choose this over a soundbar if you don't mind having separate speakers and you've got enough outlets to power the speakers. It's not as simple and clean looking as having a one speaker solution like you'd get with a soundbar, but the audio upgrade is far more immersive and satisfying. However, it's not as accurate sounding as having proper speakers in the proper locations like you'd get with a receiver and 11 speakers. But as it stands, for a system consisting of only 4 speakers, you get a convincing multi-channel experience that doesn't take up too much space. The 360 Spatial Audio did a really good job of giving me a phantom center channel, which worked well with my ultra short throw setup. I thought the sweet spot was fairly big at maintaining the center image, but if you veered off too far from that sweet spot, obviously the magic disappears. It's still pretty cool that you don't have to have your speaker set up in the perfect locations to get decent sound, although I would advise you get it as close as possible. You can't mount a speaker high up on a wall and have one on the floor and expect to have good sound. There's only so much the system can do. And if you're all in on Sony, using the A80 as a center channel is such a cool idea and it works well. The timbre of the TV doesn't match the rest of the system, but for the most rock solid center channel, it's kind of a no brainer if you have a compatible Sony television. Now I didn't do any demos, but if you're subscribed to Tidal, they have a bunch of 360 reality audio tracks you can use with the A9. 
Some of it is mixed really well, and some of it not so much. It's a nice enough listening experience, but if you're a diehard audiophile, you're probably going to look to get something better. All that being said, the Sony A9 is a winner in my book if you want really good immersive sound without having to get a dozen speakers. It's a little pricey, but that's the price you gotta pay right now for the convenience and the sound quality. Just remember to save your spare change and grab the subwoofer if you're gonna pick it up. We'd like to thank Value Electronics for partnering with us to bring you this review. If you'd like to pick up anything mentioned in this video or any other AV product, just visit valueelectronics.com or give them a call. Just let them know that we sent you. Well, thanks guys for checking out the video. Give it a like if you found it useful and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you all again in the next video.